I need you to know that if I did have the money to make this deal happen, I would absolutely make this deal happen. Delhi Ali, 29 years old, free agent, 37 caps for England, would be possible to sign if, and it's probably a big if, I had any money. Yeah, we are still over our wage budget. We're not losing money. In fact, our overall balance is really, really healthy. Today, might be about to get a bit healthier. And that is because we are taking on Barnsley in the FA Cup first round. Of course, Barnsley in real life knocked out the FA Cup by this team here, Horsham FC. If you've not heard about this story, uh, Horsham actually lost the second round of the FA Cup second leg to Barnsley. Barnsley fielded an ineligible player and have been thrown out the competition. So Barnsley, if you want to play an ineligible player against me... That would be nice. You may have caught it already on one of the earlier screens. We've played a month of football since we were last here. Things are going rather well, but they could go even better. And if we were to continue this FA Cup run, oh, I'll tell you what, I don't know what I'd do. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 16, he says, with absolutely no confidence whatsoever. I'm pretty sure it's 16. If it's not, editing Jack, just edit my voice. No one will notice. Today, FA Cup is on the agenda. Last episode, we had a kit clash. Good news, everyone. Kappa, our kit kind of providers, have updated our sleeves. Shout out to Whitey, who makes all my custom kits. We should not have any more kit clashes going forward. I hope. Now, since we are last here, we have played a month of football. Of course, last time out, two big wins against Hashtag United and Gloucester City. Since then, six games played, six wins, the first of which was perhaps the least convincing of the bunch. We took on Hightown. It was a proper ding-dong affair, but ultimately, we did win via penalties. Yeah, it's not exactly how you want to win things, is it? After that, another cup game, this time in the FA Cup. That game that I earmarked as a game we should be winning against a team with perhaps the best ugly badge I've ever seen in football in Romulus. We did beat them. They're two levels below us. We beat them 4-1 and you'll see here, Rio McAvoy's been getting a whole host of goals. He'd score in wins against Stourbridge and Leamington. We then took on Ramsgate where we win in the FA Trophy first round 1-0. Ramsgate, if you're wondering, do play at the same level as ourselves. And to cap off the run of these games, we beat Sirencester Town 6-3. I think it said Sirencester. No idea. It's definitely one of those places where the name of it is said weirdly. In this game, whole Chuddy, two bangers. He scored goal of the episode last episode. He got two absolute screamers in this game here. Maybe the second one, slightly less of a screamer. That one there, smashed in. And later on in the game, in the 61st minute, not quite into the same kind of roof of the net as the previous one, but nevertheless, a good shot from the long shot specialist, who now that I've actually checked on him, I realise only has eight long shots. You might be forgiven for thinking, wow, he must be scoring loads of goals. No, he scored three goals. They've come across two games, but to be fair, they were all pretty emphatic ones. So unlike previous seasons, we really are juggling lots of cup competitions. The last couple of seasons, we've been out of all the cup competitions by November. Here's the competition screen. There's lots and lots of matches being played, and as you can see from our schedule, it has been rather jam-packed. Against Sirencester, I did play a completely rotated team midweek, so that for this game against Barnsley, we'd be at full fitness, fully rested, and ready to go. Now, just a little peek at the league table. Of course, you might remember Hitchin. I mention every time we talk about them. We hammered them at the start of the season. They are still our closest rivals. We are four points ahead of them. They do have one game in hand, which if they were to win, would cut that gap to one point. And in fact, as we play Barnsley today, they play in the league. Rio McAvoy and Gillen are the top two goal scorers. If we look at the average ratings, though, Jake Cartwright's up there. And Daniel Oyetunde is also up there. Uh, he still hates me. So that's good. One player who's actually decided he is happy. I can't believe I'm saying this. Miles Maycock is happy, everyone. Can you believe it? Or at least, no, okay, that's a lie. He was happy. Now he's unhappy that he wants a new deal. First, he wanted to leave because the club wasn't good enough. Now he's decided the club's good enough and he wants more money. To be fair, he is currently on £20 a week. He expects up to £950 a week. Just to remind you, uh, I am currently over the wage budget. Paying him £900, slightly beyond our capacity. 
just a little bit. Not sure we can expect to make it through this FA Cup game, but if we could take it to a replay away from home, that would be great. Just as a reminder, with the FA Cup, ticket sales are split 50-50. So for a club like ourselves, it'd kind of be in our interest to go to Oakwell, Barnsley Stadium, that can hold 23,000 fans, have a tens of thousands of people turn up, and then take half the money. That said, we are at home for this first game. It's going to hopefully help our bank balance. We'll keep a close eye on things. Right now, we've got 225,000 pounds. I wonder how much we're going to have after this game at Butlin Road. I'm not sure what the plan is for the second game of today's episode. It may be the replay, if we can make that happen. It may be the, the next league game. Who is the next league game? I really should have checked this. Can you tell I was too excited about the fact that we're in the FA Cup? Uh, yeah, definitely am. Uh, our opposition would be Molden and Tiptree. Why does their badge look like a pub kind of logo that you'd see on a pub door? We've already knocked out Hashtag United, Romulus, and who was the other team we knocked out? Why is the name of the team gone? Kidderminster Harriers, Kiddy, we got rid of. We want to add another team to that list of scalps. I do suspect this will be where the run comes to an end. In terms of the team that we're going with, you may notice Gucci a defensive midfielder. This is a new revelation. It's something I've been trying out because Gucci is good defensively where we actually end up dropping Ben Perry, who of all the new signings we made over the summer, perhaps the most disappointing, although considering we're only playing him £150 as a breakthrough prospect, I can't really be that upset. But yeah, he has dropped out the team and Hull Chuddy is now playing as a box-to-box -box midfielder on the left-hand side. That does mean that Kelly holds down his spot in the first team. Earlier on in the year, I thought it might be Kelly that makes way. But kind of having analysed things, I've decided that I prefer Kelly more than Ben Perry. So, sorry, Ben. In the final third, McAvoy and Gillen, I'm going to start up front. On paper, Oyatunde here is our best player in the striking position. Yet, I don't really trust him. I say I don't trust him. I do trust him to come on and make a difference. But in this game here, I want to go with the two strikers who are in better form. And Gillen and McAvoy have lots of goals between them. As of late, Alex Bradley at right back has looked absolutely superb. I mean, look at the sea of green ratings in the league. Two goals, five assists, 7.17 rating for him. He's actually looking like a really good free transfer pickup. And at the back, I am going to be going with Karan Samuels alongside Jake Carwright. These two guys have been our two centre-backs primarily through this year. They've been playing very, very well, much to the dismay of Tom Wilson, who is still unhappy I'm not playing him more. Matty Waters is going to be our set-piece demon at left-back and in goal. We stick with Brian. Brian, but I love of Brian. Uh, he's a great lad. He's not been training very well lately, but in the last three games, he's played well. So far this year, four clean sheets in 13 games. I think we only got four clean sheets in the entirety of last season, and whilst we have been better at the back, this man knows how to make saves. So this is our first ever test against Football League opposition. A proper challenge. It's not going to be easy. I'm going to try and big up the players and motivate them, but we have to accept going into this. This is probably where things come to a screeching halt. Last year, we were dismantled by a team in the Vanarama National North. Barnsley are in the league... Well, I was going to say the league above that. No, no, they're, they're a few leagues above that. They're in League One. They're a good team, I'm scared. It's also worth noting, this is the first video I'm recording on the new update, which did come out days ago. Last couple of episodes, I played without actually restarting the game. I thought I'd updated the game. I'm guilty of just leaving Football Manager running at all times on my home PC. I don't know if I'm the only person who does that. It's just, you know, if I've got 10 minutes to spell, just open up Football Manager and do a little bit on the side. But I've restarted the game. It's, I think, a new match engine of sorts and all the goals have vanished. Nothing's happening. Okay, I say all of that. Nine minutes left to the first half. I mean, it's boring. It's not a classic thus far, but actually, nil-nil, to hold them out for this long, a good reflection of the lads. We've worked hard here. We still might be tested a little bit defensively as they get the ball into the middle, and Aidan Marsh gives them the lead. And what an anticlimactic way to concede that is. Jake Cartwright after that went in looked inconsolable. I'm not even sure if it was really his fault here. They just had a lot of players in the middle. Cartwright kind of half got there. It fell to Marsh and Brian was caught flat-footed. Barnsley take a predictable lead. But you know what? Don't count us out of it just yet. Maybe count it us out of it in a moment. Marsh is coming forward again. Cartwright, not quick. Trying to chase back. It's squared across. It's saved once. It's saved again. Brian, you beautiful man. In fact, I think Samuels got the second block. But it's heroic defending to keep it at 1-0. We've been tested here defensively. 
If this game remains 1-0 for as long as possible, that's good. At some point in the second half, I could just throw on a third striker. Half-time in this game, it's only 1-0. I will just point out again, Barnsley are in League One. Look at the XG story. They've had two really good chances, created nothing besides that. We've not really created enough either, mind you. I'm going to tell the players they've been terrible so far. Sam Kelly lacks confidence. I, I have faith in you. He looks happy now. We are struggling to have the ball in this game. With that in mind, I am just going to ask the players to get the ball forward that little bit quicker, I think, when we do have possession. Let's try and get it to the big men up top. No one's having a standout game so far. I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus and say they're playing poorly, but we have got changes we can make to change this game around, I feel. The longer it stays at 1-0, the better, and there could be a chance here. Set piece. We might not get many chances like this, and on this occasion... Cartwright heads over. That was only our second corner of the game, but at least we've created something to start the second half. And in fact, I'm looking at the match stats here. We're creating a little bit more. Hold Chuddy wins the ball. This man scores screamers. He could go on his lonesome. Instead, he does that. Apparently, that was almost one of the goals of the season, according to the commentator. I don't know what season they're watching. Different one to me. Clearly already forgot about Bakavoy's overhead kick. You know what, old Chuddy? I've witnessed you do that. You're coming off the pitch. Are you Tunde? On you come, my friend. Elsewhere, oh, do I bring in Fabio Ducker? Do I bring in Ducker? I've been trying to loan list him lately because he's unhappy about not playing first team football. If you scored goals, mate, you'd play a little bit more. I don't know why. The, the voice is talking to me again. I'm putting him on up top. Ducker on you come. Gillen off you come. Elsewhere. I was going to say, let's put the wing backs on attack. Probably a bit too early for that. We are going to lose the midfield battle even more severely now. But ultimately, we do need to just get the ball forward quickly. We need to just go for this game. We've got half an hour left to try and get a goal against a team that play four divisions above us, just as a reminder. To keep it close for an hour is fantastic. Now we have to gamble a little bit. We've brought on a third striker, Gucci, Bradley. Oh, you Tunde's in the middle. And for a second, I thought he was going to get his noggin on it. Hayton plucks it out the air. There is 28 minutes left. It's still a one-goal game. I'm going to remind you of that. We are still in it to win it. You have to imagine Barnsley will still create stuff in this game, but all it takes is one moment of magic. Marsh wide to Cotter. We are going to be tested, I think, defensively here, especially now we're committing players forward. Ball threaded through to Marsh. Cartwright, caught flat-footed. Brian Okonkwo, what a save, my son. I, I say that, they've given a goal kick. I think it hit the crossbar, but he had it covered. 15 minutes left in this game. It's time to demand more. It's time to switch the wingers to attack. It's time... To d -d 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 attack, not defend. Uh, <laughs> some people thought I was going to say something very different there. Um, I'm going to make one more change. You know what, Jones? I believe in you. You're you're a player with first touch technique and ability, and I, I just need you to ping the ball forward, please. He's going to drop in as a deep line playmaker on defend. Gucci, you can get forward, my friend. We've got we've got to throw players forward. We want to try and take it to a replay. I don't want to say it too loudly. We've actually maybe been the better team in the second half. There's five minutes left here. We need a goal. We need something. And there might be something. Maycock has the ball. Four minutes left. Although <laughs> they've got a lot of players forward. So when we turn over the ball like that, we might be in trouble. Cotter getting in behind. It would have been lovely today to have something to cheer about. I can't help but feel like... There is not going to be anything to cheer about here. Barnsley double their lead. Three minutes left. That is game over. I know we've not scored and we've not created a ton. But ultimately, I don't feel that embarrassed. We came into this game with no real expectations. Like I said, the dream was to take it to a replay. But to make the FA Cup first round is not an insignificant achievement in itself. We pushed them hard. We worked them hard. And they might get a third goal and suddenly the scoreline makes it look like we just got spanked. We were good in this game. We were good in this game. The history books might not know it. I know it deep down in here. Marsh with the ball for them. Lays it to Cotter. Are they going to really get a third after all of this? They don't deserve it. We've committed men to the attack. We've taken a gamble. And it might just cost us here. They hit the woodwork. 2-0. Just keep it at 2-0. Two 2-0's fine. Barnsley, be happy with 2. I'm happy with 2. They're happy with 2. Yeah, Barnsley. I mean, look, they're in League One. They're a good League One team as well, the media prediction of seventh. We've really not embarrassed ourselves here. We were underdogs out there. Good effort. Okay, the players completely disagree and hate me. 
All of a sudden, this competition screen looks a little more empty, doesn't it? Yeah, Town we take on in the FA Trophy, where we've already exceeded expectations, and in the Southern League Cup, been drawn against a team in Wales. Yeah, Murphy Town, Swansea slash Cardiff slash Newport wannabe club over here, the, the non-league Welsh team who play in England. They play at the same level as us. They're actually quite good. The only thing that could cheer me up really here would be if Hitchin lost their game. Hitchin, did you play? Did you win? No, they drew 1-1 against Bedford Town and elsewhere, Halzo in town managed to win and with that, now go above Hitchin. I'll tell you what, it's all drama here in the Southern League Premier Central. There are three points separating the top three. Our upcoming game against Molden and Tiptree is the kind of game we should be winning Molded and Tiptree score a lot. They also concede a lot. They've got the fourth most goals scored, the second most goals conceded. Expect goals in this next one. Let's get a win today. I want to make up for the Barnsley game. If you were wondering how much money did we make off that Barnsley game, £85,000, a new gate receipt record, of course, we do share that money. In spite of that, though, our club overall balance sits at £280,000. I don't actually have any realistic requests I can ask for. Well, I was going to say I don't have any. I do have some. I want the youth recruitment improved. Give me that. I wasn't expecting to have the option to click that because, as you can see, looking at my board requests in 2025, I've, I've been asking for quite a lot of stuff. I mean, I've only asked for the wage budget to be increased on uh, three occasions, transfer budget on three occasions. Eventually, they'll grant something, maybe. If you're wondering, by the way, about the senior affiliate they granted, of course, we already had Warsaw as an affiliate. They couldn't find another club, so... Even the one thing they granted, I didn't actually benefit from. The board have decided our youth recruitment network is fine. Look, please do it. I know we're over the wage budget, but this is really important. They've actually granted it. I love this board. It's the first thing they've granted in forever, mind you. Now, Brian, if you just want to increase the wage budget, we will be best friends again. Even after your friend to sack me that time. I mean, let's just ask for the junior coaching budget to be increased. Why not? I have actually made one sale just now. Nike Limbert Hines. He was one of our backup goalkeepers. He was on £50 a week. I've got him off the wages with us having Ovendale at the club as a backup with Brian, of course, coming in. Don't really need such an expensive third choice goalkeeper. Additionally, I am currently looking to loan out David Dormer to save £25 and Jack May to save a further £20. With those two players leaving us, we're almost under the wage budget again. So that would be nice to achieve. Oh my god, the board have actually increased the junior coaching budget. We're, we're going to have like some of the best facilities for the next few promotions, assuming we can get promoted with this team. Things are looking millhouse here. I have also made the decision that for the Molden and Tiptree game against the team that score a lot and can't defend a lot, I'm going to play the free striker system. I feel like we owe the fans after the Barnsley game to go out there and have a goal bonanza. I also want to see if the new update to Football Manager has changed how the match engine works. And this feels like a quite interesting game to see. Are there still lots of goals possible? Have just noticed a minor problem on the horizon. Akonkwo is on international duty for our game against Murphy Town. He's been called up by the Nigeria under 20 squad. I'm fuming. This is the stoppable defence versus the movable object, this next game, against Molden and Tiptree. I'm expecting lots of goals. They are firmly planted in mid-table. We should be beating them handsomely. It'd be nice to score a few, wouldn't it, after we didn't score last game. It has been a week since the game against Barnsley. With that in mind, players are rested. I am going to the free striker system. It does mean that whole Chuddy is going to drop down to the bench and Oyetunde is coming in to play up top. It does annoy me that when we play teams that play in white, either for their home or away kit, we are forced to play in our away kit even at home. As beautiful as our red rugby kit is, it just feels illegal for us to have to wear our away kit at home. It happens on the regular. Maybe we can turn the angst that I feel because of that into a performance on the pitch. We are taking on Molden and Tip Tree here. Not really fair that we're taking on two places at once, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. And like I mentioned, defensively, they are not good, but offensively, they do also like to score. So with our free striker system, I'm expecting fireworks here. This might also be the game which, if we fail to win, I completely abandon the free striker system as a result of. Gillen is in behind, though. He goes down in a heap, and we get given a penalty after 12 minutes. It's going to be McAvoy over it. He has been in some scintillating goal scoring for me. He's the top scorer in the division. I'd put my house on him to score. And it's a good job he didn't miss because I don't want to lose my house. It's 1-0. 
Brian with a goal kick, launching it long. McAvoy wins it in the air. Gucci still sliding in that defensive midfielder position. Has looked really, really good there. And now it's Waters at left back. This man can cross. He can't pass, though, <laughs> as we've seen there. That through ball was absolutely atrocious. Thought for a second they might be able to exploit the space in behind our left back, but Cartwright's there to mop up the pieces. And now it is Kelly laying it inside to Maycock. He dances past his man. The number seven almost scored a sensational goal. It's a great save by the keeper. We do still have the corner, though. Waters is over. It looks rather foggy on the far side of the pitch. I think he's over there. Um, maybe he couldn't see the players in the box because that cross was poor. Not exactly been fireworks so far in this game, although I guess there's still, what, 67 minutes of football plus any added time to be played, and Ayula is on the attack. Has a fantastic name. That's a fun name to say, isn't it? Ayula. Is he, is he good, Ayula? He's Irish, and he looks quite good. He's actually really good. I kind of want to sign him just so I can shout his name. I'll tell you what, if we had some money, I'd be making some fun signings just for the name. Whether or not it's a good transfer strategy to sign players because of their names, I'm not sure. We've given away a penalty. I know I'm rambling on game, but you don't have to snap me back to reality like this. We score from one penalty. Brian's doing a little dance on the line. Can he stop Dinsmore scoring? Oh my God, Brian, I love you. I'm getting him a birthday card. I'm getting him a birthday cake. He is getting his birthday put on the calendar. I'm going to get a photo taken with it, with him and put it on my fridge at home to remember this moment. What a bloke. What a bloke. Imagine if we just go up the other end now and score. That would be fun. Bradley, who gave away the penalty, by the way. You've got to thank Brian after this game as well. Samuels lays it forward to Gucci. Imagine if we were just to respond immediately. McAvoy through the middle. Can Mac score? Yes, Mac can. From one end of the pitch to the other. Maycock with the assist. It's 2-0. I'll tell you what, it's not quite Leicester v Watford, you know, where Deeney scored that goal, but it's not far away. McAvoy, top bins, take a bow. Free kick, Waters over it. We've had loads of free kick highlights of Waters this season. I don't remember seeing him score one. He's really good at it in the post, though. Okay, half time in this game, 2-0 to the good. Maybe an error fortune after we saw them miss a penalty and went up the other end and score. But at least from open play, we were the better team. And following on from that penalty, they did not create anything. I forgot what it's like to have a good goalkeeper in Football Manager. Brian Oconquo, mate, I'm so glad he didn't go to Bath. I'm glad he's more of a fan of showers and rugby than he is Baths. What a bloke he is. I mean, I'm just talking loads about him. McAvoy's the real hero. Two goals to his game. He's going to want the hat-trick. He could get it here if Maycock wasn't going to go on his own and score the best goal of the game so far. He came through our youth intake. He is absolutely amazing. He might not be here next year unless I can find a whole lot of money to spend on him. But Miles Maycock, what a finish. That said, you know, 3-0 up, clean sheet would be nice. Not sure why I've mentioned the clean sheet. We've got a corner to deal with here. Bradley nods it away from danger. Kelly, all on his lonesome, needs to hold up the play. But I'll tell you what, there are three players on the far side of the pitch getting forward quickly. Bradley lays it forward to Gillen. The right forward, one-on-one, -on -one, should score, could score, does score. 4-0, game over. Molden and Tiptree, you guys are average. They've, they've scored. That's why you shouldn't talk trash. Elsewhere, by the way, Hitchin are currently 3-2 up and Halzo in are currently 1-0 up. So as good as our result is, we are still going to have two teams breathing down our neck. It's 4-1. They got one goal back and I was very dismissive of it. If they got another goal back and it was 4-2 with 19 minutes left, do I have to worry slightly then? Molden and Tiptree are just full of fun names. Eggbury cut it inside. Could shoot on his left, but does... Not far wide. I'm getting a bit complacent here. Have made a trio of subs just now. Ducker is on the pitch elsewhere. Holchuddy and Harrison Jones both coming in as well. Just rotating the team. I want to believe at 4-1 up with 10 minutes left. The game's over. It might not be over. Sami Ayula has scored. I feel like that player, Ayula, must have some really fun chants in real life. There's lots of potential with a name like Ayula. But I'm, I can't think of any of them off the top of my head right now. I guess, you know, like this, the tequila song is like, tequila, you can go with Ayula. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to do the rest of it. It's 4-2. It was all over at 4-0. Why are they on the attack again? Ayula's going to do it again, isn't he? Don't do it, Ayula. Brian makes a save. It's not away from danger. It is now, kind of. I'm fine. Da, da, na, 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 na
Are you learned? Okay, four minutes of added time. I was about to say, surely that is just game over. It might not be game over. We've had lots of goals. That was why I expected from taking on the team that can't defend but can score. It's 4-2. If they make it 4-3, I'm not going to panic. There's no time left. It's going to be A-OK. -okay. Samuels, just get it away from danger. Jones, Maycock. By the way, absolutely love this red away kit. I think it's the socks. It's got Dennis the Menace energy. Hold Chuddy through the middle. Oh, McAvoy, score it. Get your hat trick, son. I'm going to bow to him. Hey, Hold Chuddy with the assist. I'm bowing. What an occasion. It's 5 2. It's game over. Now you might be wondering at home, Jack, what was in your cereal this morning? No idea. I just had lots of energy for that second game. I think Iula gave it to me. Very happy with the rap result and how he played 5 2 win. Always happy about that. That's a proper Rugby Town FC performance right there. I mean, yeah, Halzo in town won 4-0 and Hitchin won as well. Don't, don't let that ruin the narrative. It's a great result for us. Our goal difference is amazing. Halzo in as well is quite good, to be fair. Hitchin, not quite in the same category. Only positive 16. You guys are trash. I am fully aware that I need to work on my smack talk. McAvoy, you are the GOAT, my friend. Three more goals in that game for him. Scored an overhead kick earlier on this year. 20 goals in 16. I think he might end up going into the Park to Prem Hall of Fame. I think he'd be a pretty justified inclusion at this point. Now, the reality is the FA Trophy and Southern League Cup, they're not quite as sexy and as exciting and as financially, well, beneficial as the FA Cup. So I'm not as focused on them. In terms of when we're going to be back next time, we have got Hitchin in December, but I think instead I'm going to come back in January for Halzo in town. They are a very, very good team. They are a team that... A bit of a surprise package, media prediction of 14th, they're currently up in second. They keep just performing really, really well. Have just noticed here though, Tom Adozi, their key man, did just get injured in today's game. How long is he out for? Four weeks. Well, mm, that's going to be problematic for them, isn't it? I'm hoping and praying that when you come back next time, we're under the wage budget. Whether or not that is the case or not. Come back tomorrow to find out. Thank you for your support on this series. Sorry we couldn't go up further in the FA Cup. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We're back tomorrow with more. I'm out.